there's there's three main reasons that we want to talk about trailer safety. Okay, no, don't want anybody to get hurt, which is not only yourself but somebody else. Liability, very good. Third one is just property damage. You don't want to, even if nobody gets hurt, you don't want to, you know, wreck your trailer, or hurt your cattle, anything like that. So the first thing you want to do, I think the most basic thing is walk around your trailer every time you use it and just make sure the, the tires look right. Uh, check tire pressure every so often. Another thing you want to do is make sure the lug nuts are tight. Again, you check those periodically. You want to make sure none are missing. I mean, you've all seen a boat trailer sitting by the side of the road where the bearings went bad because they didn't get the water out of the bearings, you know. So I think tires and, and bearings are, are kind of the, the uh, Achilles heel of, of uh, trailers. So that's, that's one thing you want to have in, in proper order and it, that's probably the easiest thing to do. Now if you're using a bumper hitch, you ought to have safety change. It's in interesting. I looked in the Kentucky statutes and I, I couldn't find anywhere in the statutes or the administrative regulations where the law says you have to have safety chains on your trailer, but I've, on, a, on a bumper hitch, but I've never heard of anybody not doing that. How many of you have ever checked the brake linings on your trailer? Okay, well, it, it's kind of like the bearings. It's something you ought to do sometime. You know, uh, again, it depends on how much you drive it, how much you're using your brakes, but, you know, it's an easy thing to forget, so maybe this winter it's a good time just to, to uh, get the trailer jacked up and pull the wheels off, take a look at the bearings, take a look at the, the brakes and that kind of thing. It's just something you need to do periodically, not forget about, because it's easy just to, to forget about it. I'll tell you, I see an awful lot of cattle trailers where the rear lights are, are broken out or they're not working or the guy doesn't have them hooked up. And, you know, that's creating danger for other people. It's creating danger for yourself. And it's also creating liabilities. And of course, you all know if, you're, if your lights are not if they're working, working weird, the first place you want to look at is the ground connection. That seems like that solves an awful lot of problems. There's two things you always want, always want to use. Number one, you always want to use a manufactured hitch pin, no homemade hitch pins. I know of a big lawsuit going on right now where somebody had a, a homemade hitch pin. He actually uh, had been welded up like an FFA in, in the, you know, the son had made it or something, and the, the head popped off so the pin could, you know, drop down. You don't want to do that. Um, so always a manufactured pin, and also you always, always on the road for sure. But it, really anytime, but on the road for sure, you got to have that that clip in there to keep it from popping out. That's that's really a cardinal sin to go down the road with a pin that can pop out without some kind of retaining device. As as hard as they've tried, it's very difficult to get this to last more than two three years before it starts to fade. What I've got here is actually a decal kit I bought at Tractor Supply yesterday. Um, so you can, you know, you can re, renew your SMV emblem. That's the first thing you should have, because that, that is the law to have an SMV emblem. If you take away anything from this, the, the rule of thumb is to see and be seen, okay? To see means you gotta be able to see what's behind you. Now you, but see, here's where you, you, you get into the liability part of this, okay? you got to protect yourself. You can't control what the other driver is going to do. And so by doing a lot of these things, if something does happen, first of all, it'll prevent a lot of these things from happening. People can see you from farther away. But it also shows you've made a good faith effort. You know, if they decide to sue you or something, you know, you've made a good faith effort to have your equipment visible. Now, you obviously don't want a bail falling off, so uh, that would be a you'd be liable for any damage for that. So, you know, we all know what tie down straps are. And, you know, if you're gonna be stacking bales such that they, you think they might come off depending on where you're driving, then take the time to put that tie down strap on there. How many people use a front end loader with a spike? Okay, three point hitch spike, some of you? Okay. Those spikes actually are, are pretty dangerous on the road and even in your barnyard. I think, you know, whenever there's no bail on them, whether you're on the road or not, in case somebody runs into you or if you're, they're parked. Now that's, that's $10 worth of material there from Lowe's. It's just a three inch pipe with a cap, which you would, you would glue that on or you know, use the right adhesive, glue it on. Three inches is probably too big. It depends on your spike or if, you know, if it's bent. Um, you can probably get by with two inches but 
I, I made a, uh, some of these for a guy, for one of my students in a class, and uh, he had a John Deere tractor, so we spray painted them yellow. And you drill a couple holes here in the end, and you take bungee cord and wrap it around your, your, uh, the frame of your, your uh, spike or your carrier until you wrap it around until the, the bungee cord is tight, if you have a long bungee cord, and, and you hook, hook it in so it holds it on to the end of the spike. 